In update 8.4, we have five new refines for George, Lilith, Lysithia, Bridal Nyla, and Fallen Julia. Today, we'll be going over all the new upgrades and discuss some general playstyle and build ideas. The heroic grow refined for this month is George, whose introduction to Faye is all kinds of controversial. At the very least, Enchanted Systems gave George some unique traits, such as still being the only free to play blue infantry archer. He is on the more defensive side with his high HP and decent defense. George's brother Daniel appears in his special art and made his bow. It accelerates specials and grants plus 5 attack and defense to allies within 4 spaces during combat. It also inflicts minus 5 attack and defense on foes within 4 spaces, and those foes suffer a free fall attack during combat. Daniel made bow is very simple and has improved its buffing and debuffing range by double, while also adding defense buffs and debuffs to the kit. Similar to the new Crux C skills, George now gives any allies a free fall attack if foes are within his 4 space range. As a slower unit, George himself likes that follow. For the actual refine, at start of turn, if George is within 2 spaces of an ally, grant plus 6 attack and speed field buffs, the Hexblade status, and the Bright Side cooldown status to himself and allies within 2 spaces. If George initiates or is within 2 spaces of an ally, grant plus 5 attack and defense during combat. George has opened his shop to supply the team with more support effects. Nearby allies gain bonus attack and speed, Hexblade adaptive damage, and extra cooldown charging. If they fight within 4 spaces of George, they gain bonus attack and defense, and if foes are within those 4 spaces, then they lose attack and defense and take a free follow-up. George will basically gain all these effects himself on top of slaying. Overall, extremely simple, hybrid support weapon, Hexblade and Breath type cooldown support are excellent to mess around with, and you can stack follow-up effects as long as no follow-up isn't in play. For general playstyle, George's support role has received a major upgrade. His buffing and debuffing range are twice as large, offer more stats for his team, and you get that follow-up as well. If you want to go all-in on support, George can add a Rally Plus Reuse to his shop lineup. You can fully buff up one ally, inflict long-range debuffs, and add Guard to the list of support effects. If you have the Tier 4 Reuses, then Discord and Schism are also great conditions. In the C slot, you can go with basic field buffing skills, or you can pick Infantry Pulse 4 to go with George's higher base HP. Feel free to stack HP with boost A skills and the squad A's secret seals. With Infantry Pulse 4 and Slaying, you can get Deadeye 2 1 cooldown. If George were to tank a hit, you could counter with for a quick KO. Otherwise, you could also run higher cooldown Ignis that will also charge you one action due to Bright Type cooldown. In a similar vein, we can do the same thing with the brand new Lagoo's Friend 4. Emblem Ike's new B skill is very interesting and George could run it. First off, unless you use Miracle, you basically have to run Ignis, Glacies, or Aether to meet the 3 cooldown condition. With 3 cooldown Ignis, George gains minus 2 cooldown as the foe attacks. Hopefully he survives, and with the extra flat DR based on 20% defense of res. If the foe doesn't have guard, George now counters with Ignis, but it's now got DR piercing and bonus true damage on top. You can bypass guard with Times Pulse, but Image Pulse 4 works here too. While Lagoo's friend offers flat DR, any unit still ideally wants percent DR if you can get it. Outside of Ellen Likes Ring, the B slot is generally our percent DR slot. Guard 4, Nelson Dissip 4, and even Brash Assault 4 could work. Brash 4 or Quicker Pulse 4 can stack follow ups with their fine, but again, any defense and no follow up effects will counter these. If you want to run something simple, like low attack and defense, Guard Echo is a nice attune skill option. Generally speaking, George has a lot of options, but he definitely sacrifices personal combat for all those new support effects. If you can get defense from his field boss, feel free to use that new close bonus doubler, or if you got two or more status effects, you can also run Prime 4. He can get some decent damage potential with Hexblade and his multiple cooldown perks. Lagu's friend is new and fun, but Special Sprout and Tempo are other solid pairings. Speed is not the worst stat for George, but it's mainly just to let him bypass Fall Denial on slower tanks. It can be nice for initiating, but George is more geared up to setting up shop and waiting for the customers to come to him and the team. Overall, George got a decent refine, some nice upgrades to his support power, and there aren't that many defensive archers if you want to go for a bulkier build. Next up is Lilith, who is a high speed blue flying dragon. Astral Breath has received some major updates. It grants plus 3 3, and Lilith can now move to any space within 2 spaces of her support partner, literally across the map warping with no prior setup besides having a support in the field. Every turn, if Lita is within 3 spaces of her support, grant speed defense from his plus 6 field buffs and the dodge status to Lita plus her support partner. If she's within 3 spaces of any ally, gain plus 5 to all stats in combat and restore 7 HP after combat. First off, 2 space warping from potentially anywhere is crazy for offensive plays. Fallen Lita has this already. New to the weapon is almost full field buffs and dodge, maybe another reference to her Fallen Alt since she was the first with Speed Smoke 4. 
Originally, Lula needed to be near his support for the plus size stats, this can now be any ally, and the 7 HP healing is also new. Further refine, if above 25% HP, Lilith gains more stats equal to X, she deals true damage equal to Y, and gets full no follow up effects. For the bonus stats, X is equal to the number of spaces moved by the initiator with a base plus 4. If someone moves 4 spaces, Lilith can get up to plus 8 extra stats. For the true damage, Y is equal to the highest total field buffs on Lilith or allies within 2 spaces. This is treachery, but also includes nearby ally buffs. With her new base effect, Lilith can get plus 18 true damage on hit, and with no fall up, hopefully that means a double using her highest speed. Overall, you still want to use Lilith with a support partner on the team, no support means no field buffs or dodge. Also, consider a more aggressive partner since Lilith can fall up or from anywhere on the map. Sadly, more aggressive mobile dragons have not been giving a lot of love since Lilith's original release, and that's still holding back some of her potential. For example, a cross-map warping unit sounds really fun, except Lilith can't use Gale Force, and multiple new dragon-only skills like Scow or Dragon's Roar require fresh checks. The new refine does add a decent bit of resistance for Lilith, but she's starting out behind. She can make it work, but how much res will you need to stack in exchange for other perks? First off, let's talk some inspiration from her Fallen Ult. That Lilith uses no follow up with Dive Bomb for hopefully quick 1 2 attacks. This new refine opens up the same option, and Area Maneuvers offers more warp options to non support partner allies. Clash 4 is a fitting A skill since the refine also uses a clash condition, and Lilith's warp does count toward the movement amount. If Lilith warps 2 spaces around her support, she can also catapult them around with Guidance 4 or Soaring Echo. This combo would be best with Kanto, but you're going to need outside help from someone like a unit like Peony. You could also forgo Dive Bomb perks for Near Choice Kanto. If you can get a tier 4 Near Choice, that's guaranteed Kanto 2 now, plus another 7 true damage on top of the refine. There's currently only speed and defense Near Choice 4 at the moment. For some other initiation skills, Flared Sparrow, Occultus' Strike can work. Daily Miasma or Speed Smoke 4 can offer some mixed phase power. If you want to run Dragon specific skills, Counter Roar won't require rush checks and adds more percent DR to Lilith's dodge, also 14 HP sustain. If you want to use Scout or Dragon's Roar, Lilith will need major res investment if you plan to fight other high res units. Rain Debuffs can help, although there is no res rain snap just yet. For seals, there is Dragon's Wrath 3, but it's enemy phase only. Same for Distant Counter, but personally, I'm not a fan of DC on units innately weak to arrows. Overall, I think Let Us Refine is alright, but the devs don't really give attention to quote unquote player phase dragons. In fact, even without Gale Force Axes, Lilith heals, which would hurt any kind of Fury Wings of Mercy deep dive game plan. To make things tougher, Lilith also has zero DR piercing options, and one of her quote perks is Heavy Blade. Not great. You can patch this up with allies like Legend of Camilla or Hinaka. Hinaka's Flyer Emblem Charge plus Lilith Warping could be fun. Our next refine is for regular Lysithia, a Red Infantry Mage all about nuking. This Lysithia has Hades as her tome, and it got a fairly simple refine. The base weapon has accepted specials and now procs when initiating or when near allies on the enemy phase. Lysithia gets plus 5 attack and speed, she neutralizes any attack and speed debuffs, and if her special cooldown is at 2 or lower at the start of combat, she gains another plus 7 attack and speed in combat. Hades got some quality of life improvements, ignoring attack and speed debuffs and adding a bonus plus 7 speed. The extra attack and speed used to require a pre-charge special, but now Lysithia can waltz in with her special on 1 or 2 cooldown. For the refine, if Lysithia initiates or faces a ranged foe, she gains plus 5 attack and speed, deals true damage equal to 20% of her speed, neutralizes the foe's speed and rest field buffs, and if you're using an offensive special, Lysithia gets minus 1 instant cooldown before her first attack. For the most part, Lysithia is going to continue being a high burst nuking mage, basically zero defensive perks, plus 17 attack and speed, true damage, slaying plus instant cooldown. Lysithia is keeping things fairly simple, unlike her last all with those X plus Y calculations. Unfortunately, simple isn't always enough, especially at this point. Hades basically just added stat advantages manifesting in more damage and more speed. The only gameplay altering effect is the minus one instant cooldown. This is fine if you keep Lysithia's innate times pulse. Originally, she would pre-charge two cooldown specials and fire away. With the refine, you can upgrade to three cooldown Luna, Flare, or even Draconic Aura, add attack and speed finish, an attack and speed boosting seal, and special spiral four is basically a must. Unless you bring a ridiculous amount of pure damage, one-shotting into percent damage reduction is almost impossible. Lysithia is fast, but is basically gonna die to any counter. 
unlike previous alts, she has no desperation for protection, and if we use desperation 4, we have no DR piercing. One shot builds without DR piercing is kind of a lost cause against most builds up units, and units like MM Ike have no percent DR to pierce anyway. Without outside support from say like Triangle Attack or Treachery or Damage type true damage, Lysithia is just going to pit her firepower into one special and hope it KOs the foe. Unfortunately, Scowl counters these pre-charged special playstyles and a new Scowl effect is entering the game next banner. The Refine can counteract one Scowl effect, but Lysithia would be stuck with lower damage specials unless you add something like Rally Spectrum. To bypass Scowl, you can try an Air Effect special. To charge it up, you're going to need to fight a target that won't hit back or run a quit on support, or use Pulse Up for passive charging. That will take some time, but with the Refine, Lysithia can recharge AoEs, almost guaranteed. If the foe would have a Scowl effect active, that will counteract the Refine, leaving the AoE on one cooldown. For the most part, Lysithia can nuke targets better, but she has zero protection and adding safety perks takes away from her offensive potential. She can benefit immensely from certain supports like Legendary Fema Alir. That would free her from Special Spiral, which means you could run Desperation 4 ideally with no follow-up. There is Brave Robin and the new young male Robin for Rally Spectrum, Emblem Mart's Double Slaying. These can open up things like Instant Dragon Fang or Astroprox or help counter Scout. Lysithia can absolutely torch non-high-res tanks, but this refine didn't change how she already wants to play. Our season refine is for Bridal Nyla, a green beats infantry with high speed. Bride's Fang receives some nice updates. It now grants minus one cooldown on every single turn. Nyla has Sling, and if she initiates with the first more than 75% HP, she inflicts minus five to attack, speed, and defense. Additionally, reduced first attacks with an S by 40%, and a special triggers grants minus two cooldown after combat. As an older beast unit, Nyla will get the new updated infantry beast transformation effect, basically plus seven true damage on special trigger and full tempo effects. Due to the base weapon, it now also always active on initiations. Nyla's mini special spiral effect is now the full minus two cooldown, and she basically has pulse up, gaining minus one cooldown every turn. Further refined, like OG Nyla, she will get near Trace Kanto if transformed. Also, each turn if Nyla is transformed, she gains the cannot be slowed by terrain status and plus one movement. At start of combat, if above 24% HP, inflict another minus four debuffs, restore seven HP after combat, and if special triggers neutralize foes non-special percent DR effects. Unlike Lysithia, Nyla kinda just got special spiral four baked into her refine. She doesn't get as much stats or true damage, but Nyla can take a hit or two. She gets free cooldown just for existing each turn, and extra mobility if transformed. I still think the Laguz Rose should be able to transform guaranteed, but realistically, you're gonna need those new beast to beast skills if you can't stay away from human allies. Like OG Nyla's refine, the added Kanto is super fun with her Glare C skill. Basically, after combat, Nyla inflicts one space AoE gravity. She can lock down foes while running away. Three movement and ignoring trees helps in that endeavor. Very fun refine, lots of new gameplay additions. It may not utilize the updated special spire 4 features, but Nyla can run Gale Force much easier with the constant minus one cooldown. By turn two, Gale Force is already on two cooldown. With Nyla's art with Temples, no guard, two actions can charge that. Now to gain the three movement and your trace Kanto, Nyla needs to be transformed. If you use Beast Agility, guaranteed transformation, speed and defense debuffs, a little bit of true damage, and if Nyla outspeeds, she gets no follow. -up. Very good user of the skill. With three movement, Clash is excellent, and after combat, Glare provides gravity. Should Gale Force proc, Nyla can pounce on a second target or just get extra retreat options. You can also opt for Fury Recoil stacking to enable Wings of Mercy. The Refine does heal, so you're going to need double Fury to out damage it. For more combat to build, we want a damage special to get that deer piercing hit, and we can swap Glare out for a combat to effect like a Smoke 4 debuff. With Slaying Luna, Nyla can precharge it in two turns, initiate with deer piercing special. If the foe survives, a breath type cooldown skill such as the Beast Oni, Attack and Speed Wild, can recharge Luna. Temple's No Guard helps in consistency, and Nyla can proc a second special if we have no fall up and out speed. After combat, Luna recharges again due to special spiral. If you want a more defensive playstyle, this refine can be great with skills like Vantage, Distant Counter, or say No See Disrupt. The OG Nyla used those last two, and while I wouldn't call Nyla a crazy tank, she can punish quite hard if she lives. For Vantage, having a ready DR piercing special should be self explanatory. For other skills, like Hatari Nyla, Surge can provide more percent max HP healing. Finish 4 is excellent for special spamming. Insight and future class secret seals are great for initiating. Desperation can be good for extended fights too. 
For general combat, Nyla would prefer no fall up like many faster units. You can use infantry no follow 4 if the B slot is taken, and the secret seal works too. Since she has temples no special charging, having guards somehow is great to deny enemy specials as well. In general, good user of basically any smoke for debuffs, speed, panic, defense run smoke for pathfinder, counter war, also a fun option. Overall, Bridal Nyla got some excellent additions. She got mobility if you want to employ glare hit and run tactics, or just go full DR piercing damage specials that charge by themselves and then recharge after combat. I will say that you may want to watch out for future beast skills this year. Book 8 is another beast centric cast, and Ratatoskr already gave us an excellent beast skill. Maybe like the dragons, beasts can get their own unique special, and who better to abuse it than this Nyla? Last up for today is Fallen Julia. She's a red infantry mage with high attack and res. Her dark scripture also got some big upgrades. It grants plus three attack and now has a ploy four type effect. At start of player or enemy phase, if any foes within three rows or three columns have less res than Julia's res plus five, then inflict minus seven attack and resistance, the sabaton status, the deep wound status, and the anti miracle status for non special effects. If the foe initiates combat or Julia is solo, she inflicts minus 6 attack and res and minus 4 speed on the foe, plus she makes a free follow up attack. Julia now has an attack and res ploy 3 type debuff, but instead of ploy and exposure statuses, she applies sabotage to double down on the debuffs, plus the two effects of Fatal Smoke 4. No healing plus neutralizing miracle type effects. That is a fairly strong effect because instead of using Fatal Smoke on your attacker, Julia can provide it for the whole team. The downside is that it can be cleansed if you plan to bait someone like Salaf to initiate. As for personal combat, Julia doesn't have to be solo, only if she initiates. She adds speed deals and can now follow up on units with dragon effectiveness. For the refine, if Julia has more than 25% HP, she inflicts another minus 4 attack speed and res on the foe. She prevents one follow up attack. She denies, or she deals true damage equal to 20% of her res stat and gains the regular dragon wall 40% DR, just like Julia's. With the Refine, Julia basically has Omni Breaker, inflicts minus 10 attack and res, minus 8 speed, and has some true damage, percent DR, and a ploy 4 type debuff. If the foe doesn't cleanse Sabotage, that minus 7 attack and res become minus 14 total, and Fatal Smoke 4 denies any kind of healing shenanigans or miracle game plans. Sorry, Salif. This Julia will have her legendary ults, base, light, and dark B skill. Basically, it's an Omni low that also negates adaptive damage. Definitely could keep it with the Refine, especially to fight dragons. Generally speaking, Fallen Julia wants flat resistance just to consistently employ her enemies. You could tack on Spitting Defense Ploy 3 whenever that comes out, but for now, you can just overlap with the current options to gain Ploy and Exposure. Speed Debuffs can add up with Sabotage, and Defense Debuffs give Physical Allies extra damage. With Exposure and Fatal Smoke Force effects, that can punch through the tankier units who heal or abuse Miracle. Risk Stacking in general also helps Dragon Wall plus more true damage. Of course, with still water, you forgo Julia's already bad base defense. Dragon Wall might keep her alive, but definitely not expecting any major physical tanking. If you did want to try close counter, the new bonus double version can at least try to buff all of Julia's stats. You're gonna need field buffs, so Oath 4 or Pledge can be nice options. Be aware though that Julia loses her fall up if you initiate next to an ally, so warping may not be the best all the time unless you got the two space port. Now, if you want to fight dragons, you might want to keep light and dark. However, if you want to replace it, Infantry Mage has got two new recent beast skill options, Lagoose Friend 4 and Magic Gambit 4. The basic rundown of Magic Gambit is that it's just like regular Gambit, except less true damage and less percent DR. It also doesn't work if melee foes initiate, so no close counter synergy. With Lagoose Friend, Julia can run a similar game plan like we mentioned with George. 3 quid on Flare or Iceberg is charged if the foe initiates without guard. You could do 4 quid on Glaces with Times Pulse, or ensure those 3 quid on options get charged. Julia will then counter with a DR piercing special with bonus true damage. She gains flat DR but at, at the cost of half her percent DR, so a full power dragon wall is only 20%. With Magic Gambit, Julia can stack percent damage reduction and gain some true damage, but if you ran the same 3 quid on special, this would only be 4 bonus true damage and 20% DR, which isn't a crazy amount. Also, no cooldown or no DR piercing. I think more factors need to be accounted for, but basically, if the enemy doesn't pierce DR skills, Magic Gambit might be able to reduce more damage, but Lagoose for him offers better offensive capabilities through cooldown into that DR piercing. 
The male robins with Gambit have cooldown and DR piercing in their kit, so they naturally work well with Gambit's restrictions, whereas other units like Julia either need outside support or you have to trade the burst potential for more percent DR. Now, Lagoo's friend also has innate synergy with Emblem Ike's ring to regain some of that percent DR loss. With all this said, Scow screws with Lagoo's friend's game plan. Julia can outres Scow checks. But the new female Robin has another tool that is essentially Scow that has nothing to do with res checking. If we continue down this path, the partial DR piercing options may just be better. For cooldown, times pulse or pledge skills work, but Julia doesn't have slang. You could take pulse up if you wanted Julia to passively charge special. She offers backline support, so sitting back until needed can be fine. And for still water stacking, maybe you can charge an AoE special. Since Julia has that anti miracle effect, she is naturally suited to that one shot playstyle. Being able to debuff from long range while also charging special without fighting is pretty dirty. It does lack consistency though. Overall, Fongjia got a great refine, new team support abilities via debuffs and better personal combat. While neutralizing miracle effects can counter certain threats, the anti-healing effect is also pretty amazing. Fatal Smoke 4 without needing to fight is extremely potent and currently a pretty unique ability. That will be it for update 8.4's refines across the board, fairly decent refines although I was hoping for something a little more interesting from my Scythia, maybe pull some of that mastermind type shenanigans but more nuking power isn't too bad. Personally, I would say Fallen Julia is the most interesting simply due to the Fatal Smoke 4 effect. If you hadn't noticed, healing support effects have popped up a lot in the past year. If you want to be evil, you can pair Julia with the instant damage nukers, so even if they fail to KO the enemy, they can't heal back up for another round. That's all I got for this video. We'll be back to talk about the new Young Kids Awakening banner. I already mentioned some of the new things to watch out for, but we'll go into details next time. Thank you for watching. Have fun with the new refines and I will see you in the next video.